Okay, I'm working on the Rat Rod mini bike. I really don't want to cut that brake and reposition it. Because if I do that, then I can never put a normal size tire back on here. Okay, here's the tire that was on there. Okay. Here's the tire I had wedged on there. And here was those other tires that I had bought. They claim were four ply tires, they just seem very cheap to me. But it is a little smaller right off the bat. So not quite oops, that's my lens cap. Not quite as wide. But definitely uh I'm not as heavy too. I mean this other one weighs at least double the amount. But it's definitely a little beefier than what was on there. So hoping when it blows up, this one's about right. Let's hope. So I really don't want to cut it. I really don't want to use this tire either, but we're gonna. I don't know how they say it's four ply. This is the cheapest tire I've ever seen. It even it smells like harbor freight when you walk in. And that's not even where I got it from. So I was gonna give the Okay. I swapped out that rear back tire. I really don't like this tire. You know what I mean? But I now have clearance on the brake. So I'm not really looking to modify this thing. I really don't want to cut, move, and do all this. And then be stuck with that other size tire for the rest of its life. Like I said, this is a cheap tire. I have a matching one I could put on the front, but I haven't been able to get the front tire off the rim. So, but I'd like to do that. It is a nice rounded over tire with a rounded over shoulder. Good for mini bike. Okay, so I spent an hour wedging that other tire off the rim in a vise, two screwdrivers, and oil. I put the other matching tire on the front. You think it's over, right? Never over. It's never over. So, I've already tried expanding the forks. I put the bolt in there and spread it. I spread it out an inch and a half on the top. And when it springs back, it moved an eighth. So, but if I could spread it out a little bit further, these sides do not touch. So there is hope. Really what it's gonna take is spreading and a tad bit of warming here. I don't wanna weaken this thing too much so I can get it to stay. Or I can sit there and wedge washes in it. But when I start wedging stuff, then it's just going to become a big pain in the ass. But I might do that anyway. Oh, when I switch that bearing. The bearing that was on there is now on this Harbor Freight wheel. The bearing is right there. Oh, they were wasted. I guess somebody crushed it down too tight. You can see where it was actually rubbing. So, they were the same bearings as these cheap Harbor Freight tires. That I picked up two for five dollars when they were on sale. And we used them on the front of the Coke Cup for one day. Um, so I pressed it right in there done like I said I wanted to get a new bolt for the front axle here and once I start spreading it that one's going to be too short as it is they're like a dollar twenty at Sears oh that's Sears yeah. Sears is gone at um, the Home Depot so but now that I got to spread it I got to make sure I got a long enough one so I think I'm going to play with that just to spread it to see if it's going to work out I really don't want to flatten the tubes here. That'll just weaken it. Well, with just hand force, I was able to put three washes on that side, just for a test, and two on that side. And it misses it, just barely. This side's close, but it doesn't touch. So, I think what I'd like to do is actually I'll spread these apart again and maybe just warm it here and here to get it to be like this and relax, maybe a hair bit bigger. So I don't have so much pressure against the sides of those bearings, they're all ball bearings, not roll tapered roller bearings. And hopefully wind up with three washes on either side. And that should give me good, you know, that should give me enough clearance and not put such a load on the uh, the bearing either. Yeah, if it requires four on each side, it requires four, but I think three would be good. So but yeah, that's a nice front tire for the mini bike. Like I said, it's it's rounded over. 
So. It's funny, everything I do on this mini bike leads me right back to the scrub brake. The scrub brake has been a problem since the beginning. And one of the problems is, is it's not meant for this mini bike. Okay, this was added on. This thing originally had a disc brake in the rear, which was removed. And when you look at it here, this lowered section, this isn't for the return spring of the scrub brake. This is for the kickstand that would have came down. And the mechanism, which is no longer. Um, I did straighten this and straighten this a little bit. Uh, the problem is, is you got to have it sitting something like this. Because you don't want to lift your foot up and then push it down this far for it to start to work. So, I mean, I'm going to leave the scrub brake. Obviously, I'm going to redo that bolt up there and all this and whatever. But I grabbed one of my gussets that came with uh, my ladder bar setup. Because I used the cross mount with a ladder bar setup on my old school ladder bars. And I'm going to find a rough spot. And I'm just going to weld it to the base. To give it an area to start from. So when you put your foot down, you only, you know what I mean? You don't have to push it down or lift your foot, then push it down to get it to start to activate. So, and this scrub brake is well used. So, plus I'm back down to these boogered up holes on the bottom. And I'm going to plate it. I'm going to put the strips of plate in. Because if I don't, I know I'm going to kick myself in the ass and it's going to be an ongoing hell. So I'm going to wind up doing it underneath. I'm going to wind up putting the strips in. So when I slide this motor back and forth, it's riding on something straight. Um, like I said, the tail end of this one's good. The tail end of this one's good. This whole one's been hacked out except for one side here. Uh, I think there's a little edge of this one that's still good. So I have good reference points on what the way to do it. Because this, this strip, I can just bring it right up to this edge, and this edge, and it'll go from the bar, you know, down to the back. And the other side, I'll do right on this side to this side. This one, I'll probably do the strip from like here to here, and you know, from the front of this to like here, whoops, to there. This bolt will be shortened down. I'll put a new spring in there, and I'll put that tab on there. For the front end, I think what I'm going to do is, I've been thinking about it before I want to start heating and doing whatever. I had put a bolt in across before, and I put a nut on it, I was getting the tube to spread. And then it springs back. But I was thinking of spreading it a little bit wider than I need. And then like in this part of the thing, this part of the fork, putting a bar across. To either, you know, for the future to maybe mount the fender or whatever it was, I'll keep it up a little bit. But I'll weld that in while I have it spread apart. So then when the tubes relax, the upper part of this is plenty wide for the, whatchamacallit, for the tire to fit into. And then I can pull this tube closer without jamming shims up against the ball bearings, which isn't meant for that. It's supposed to have a little bit of play in it. It's not supposed to, you know, have a preload against it. So, I was playing around with the, I had a bolt this thickness, which I'm not sure how thick this is. I think this is, this is 3 8 just to see. How it would look because if I cut this bolt, there'd be no threads exposed. So I just don't want to make it look totally buggy, you know. Then sink this thing down in there and maybe put a tab on it for a fender or whatever it is down the road. So you know, it's rat roddy, but I don't want to totally booger it. That's why I don't like these big washes. But as of right now, I can't find washes with a 5 8 hole smaller than this. So that's where I stand.